Bluetooth, aka IEEE. 802.15.1. Okay, firstly, um, does anybody know where the name Bluetooth comes from? John Bluetooth. Yeah. John. Like, terrible guy in Europe. It's actually, guy. Named, it's actually named for a guy named Bluetooth, but in his Europe, name was not. It's actually Harold Bluetooth. King. He united all the European. Harold Bluetooth. King. <laughs> Nickname is Bluetooth. So uh, he was the king of Denmark in like the 10th century. Anyway, that's, that's total trivia. Don't worry about that. Um, so the idea with Bluetooth is to connect small devices over short ranges. <laughs> E.g., digital camera. Headset, cell phone, uh, computer to computer for file transfer, Bluetooth architecture. So it's uh, Bluetooth is organized on what's called a. It's basically it's to some degree point to point. It's organized on what's called a master slave. collection of such devices is called <coughs> a PicoNet. Within a PicoNet, there are four kinds of devices. Uh, so this is master-slave, so obviously one of the is the master, and there is exactly one for PicoNet. Um, there are slaves, of which there are up to seven for PicoNet. The slaves are devices that are directly connected to the master. So this is a star topology. Uh, the slaves are directly connected to the master and not any other device, or not any other device in the PicoNet. Um, and they are, the slaves are actively transmitting data. The master and slaves are actively transmitting data to each other. Uh, the other two kinds of devices there could be parked devices. These are known to the transmitter. Excuse me, known to the master, my apologies. But not transmitting. So, for example, a parked device could be uh, sitting there waiting for one of the slaves to drop off so that it can start transmitting. A parked device might simply not have any data to transmit right now and things of that nature. Um, the other kind of device that could be in a PicoNet is, a, is one on standby. And 
and these are just idle devices, not known to the master. So, um, this will be figure one in your notes. Here's what a Pico net would look like. So, we have one master covering the Pico net. That master is directly connected up to seven slaves. So, let's draw three. Like so. So, those really form the Bluetooth network. Uh, these are the devices that are transmitting information amongst themselves. In addition to the slave devices, we have several parked devices. So these are known to the master. In other words, the master is keeping track of these guys, but they're not actually transmitting data. And also, potentially within this PeeperNet, standby devices, which are simply idle and not transmitting data and not known to the master. Is there any communication between uh, the slaves? No, everything goes through the master. It's it's strictly a storage topology. And is master always transmitting or receiving as well? Uh, the master is both <coughs> transmitting and receiving. Yeah. Question over here. Is there a maximum number of uh, parts? Yes. So um, the, uh, the reason why there are uh, seven slave devices is because uh, um, the device address only contains three bits, so there's a maximum of eight devices. Um, master plus seven slaves. The number of parked addresses, uh, there, there are parked addresses, and those are conveyed in eight bits, so there can be as many as 200 and 256 of those. can be either master or slave. So that's just terminology. There's no special meaning. There's, it's not like uh, you could buy a slave device or a master device. Any device can, can fulfill either role. Um, another interesting thing about this. So I've drawn this as a circular network like so. So you might interpret this to mean that uh, these devices are somehow bound to <coughs> this particular network. That's actually not correct. Pico nets can overlap. And in fact, it's allowed for slaves to belong to more than one Pico net. So slaves can belong to two or more Pico nets. Turns out it's possible for a master can be a slave <coughs> in another Pico net. However, a master cannot be a master in two different Pico nets because the, basically the defining feature of the Pico net is the master. So if a master is a master in two different Pico nets, then they're effectively the same Pico net. So you can kind of change the topology theoretically with multiple Pico nets overlapping. Yes. And get things a little more uh, balanced. Precisely. So here's uh, something you could do. Let's extend this diagram a little bit. <coughs> 